Hey everybody, this is Paul. So in this video I'm going to begin creating a hash table project in NetBeans here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this icon in NetBeans to create a new project. And we're going to make sure it's a C++ application. And then we're going to click Next. And then I'm going to go ahead and name this one hash table video. So it's hash table video is what I'm going to name my project. And then uh, it's got a main.cpp file here. So that's good because we're going to be using C++. And I'll click finish. So now we've got our project started here. And uh, the main.cpp file is going to be in this source files folder here. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to create a couple more files so that we can uh, create a class and uh, define our class. So I'm going to right click on the source files folder and I'm going to select new C++ source file. And I'm going to name this file hash.cpp. And I'll go ahead and click finish to create that file. So now we've got the hash.cpp file open here. So going back to the projects tab, in the header files folder, I'm going to right click and create a new C++ header file. And I'm just going to name this one hash.h. Go ahead and finish. And so now we've got that file created as well. And uh, so we've got the hash.h file here. We've got the hash.cpp file here. And the main.cpp file just opened it up there. So let's look at the main.cpp file here. So nothing really fancy, nothing special. We just got uh, some standard stuff that uh, we'll need for our program. So something else we're going to need is to include um, IOStream. So we're going to include the IOStream library so that way we can print stuff to the screen and grab information from uh, the command line if we need to. So let's go ahead and also include the string class. We're probably going to be doing some string manipulation, so we'll go ahead and include that as well. So that looks good right now for our main.cpp file. So let's go ahead and just copy this stuff and we'll place it in the hash.cpp and the hash.h file as well. So we'll copy that, go into the hash.cpp file. It's empty right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and paste that information in the hash.cpp file. And then the hash.h file right here above the file guards, I'm just going to go ahead and put those in there as well. And so let's see, something else we're going to need in hash.h, hash, or not hash.h, something else we're going to need in hash.cpp is going to be to include hash.h. So go ahead and include, and this time in quotation marks, we're just going to include hash.h. And we're also going to need that in our main.cpp file as well. So we'll go ahead and include that. And that should be that should be good for all of our include statements and everything. So basically including hash.h in the main.cpp file will allow us to create a hash object when we create the hash class. And then the hash.cpp needs to include hash.h so that that way when we are defining the functions in hash.h, it knows what file to reference to see where those prototypes are. So going to hash.h now, uh, so NetBeans includes these file guards here. So inside of the file guards, we're just going to go ahead and define our hash class. So let's just type in class to start the definition here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and name it hash. So we'll do it all lowercase and then opening and closing curly brace. And then for this video, what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and do something in the public section here. And let's see, let's go ahead and create the let's go ahead and create the function prototype for the hash function itself. So the hash function is going to basically take a string variable and that's going to be our key and it's going to basically take this string that's stored in the key variable and it's going to evaluate that string, it's going to change it into an integer and ultimately it's going to change it into an integer that is an index number of the hash table and it's going to return that index number, that's what we have this return type of int here, it's going to return an integer value 
and that's going to represent where in the hash table we're going to store the information that's associated with this key here. So now that we've got that prototype in here, um, I think that's all we're going to do for the hash class for this video. We'll add more stuff to this in the next few videos, but for now, let's go ahead and just leave it at that. So we're going to have this public function inside of our class called hash that will take a string stored in a variable key and basically return an integer which represents the index that we're going to place the information um, into an array or basically into into the hash table which is it, it's an array at, at the heart of it basically so now we're gonna go ahead and just copy this and uh, we're gonna paste it in the hash.cpp file here right there and then we need to let our hash.cpp file know that we're going to basically define this function and uh, that the function comes from the hash class. So to tell it that it comes from the hash class, we're just going to type in hash and then uh, colon colon. And that should take care of it. Get rid of this semicolon here and then do an opening and closing curly brace. And so, like I said, this is just going to take in some key value. It's going to um, hash it up and it's going to return an index value so as a quick example what's going to happen here is let's say that uh, we we have our key we enter our key into the hash function and let's say that our um, our function says okay that key has a hash value of 452 or sorry 453 and uh, let's pretend like our the size of our table so we'll say table size, we'll say equals 100. So there's 100 index elements. There's 100 different locations that we can store um, information inside of our hash table. So if we enter this key and we find that it has a hash value of 453, what we're going to do is we're going to divide that by the size of our table and we'll find that, uh, that the answer to that is 4 with a remainder of 53. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this remainder here, and that will be the index number. And so this is this is the part we're going to return. So that way, if we end up with a hash value that's larger than the size of the table, we basically are modding it by the table size to get this remainder, which is going to be our index value that we're going to return to tell us where in the table to place the information associated with this key. So anyway, in the next uh, video, I'll go ahead and do the code to define what actually is happening inside the hash function. But uh, in a nutshell, this is kind of what it's going to do. It's going to return this index number. So anyway, we'll go ahead and erase or delete that right now. And in the next video, we will uh, go ahead and define this hash function. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.